Hi everyone, welcome to the final few videos of separation techniques. In this particular video, we will be discussing about fractional distillation. In our previous video, we were talking about simple distillation. In simple distillation, we use it when we want to get a solvent back from a solution. So for example, in our previous uh, lesson, we had a beaker. In our beaker, we had a solution. A solution of what? A solution that contained the solute as well as the solvent. In our previous example, the solute was salt. In our solvent was water. And then the question was, how can we get water back? Well, distillation was the technique. Essentially, because there was a difference in boiling point of water and salt, we were able to boil the water away Rather than let it, go, let it go into the atmosphere, we collect it back, condense it, and at the end of the day, we manage to collect it back inside be another beaker. That's how we get our solvent back. Of course, I'm missing out a lot of the um, experiment apparatus in that blank. Right? Um, so what is fractional distillation? Fractional distillation isn't very different, isn't too different from simple distillation. The idea is the same. Except that in fractional distillation, we're trying to solve another problem. Let's say, rather than a solution that contains a solvent and a solute, what if I have two liquids? Right? What if I have two liquids that have been mixed together? Is there a way to separate the two liquids? We learned that one way to separate two liquids is if they have different solubilities. If two liquids have different solubilities, technically the way we can go forward to separate them is through uh, chromatography. Another way to separate two different liquids that have been thoroughly mixed to it with each other is through fractional distillation. And the key idea here is that we're making use again of the difference in boiling points. Right? How does this work? Imagine now I'm going to mix these two different liquids together water and ethanol. Ethanol is a kind of alcohol. And after I mix them together, let's have a look. What does it look like on a microscopic level? Here you see ethanol as well as water. We have a problem. On a microscopic level, they have mixed together very thoroughly. Look at how they are intermingling with each other. If I were to ask you to somehow find a way to separate out ethanol and water again into their two beakers is there a way uh, this is where fractional distillation comes in we're going to make use of the fact that ethanol and water has two different boiling points ethanol has a boiling point of 78.4 degrees celsius water 100 degrees celsius we're going to make use of that fact to separate them let me introduce you to some um, experiment apparatus so that we can carry out the experiment and separate them. Right here we have a, a setup to carry out fractional distillation. You notice in many ways it's quite similar to simple distillation. For example, we have a distillation flask. On top of the distillation flask, um, you'd find familiar things like the thermometer you also find something familiar to you this is the condenser uh, and if you recall the condenser's role is to condense whatever hot vapor is passing through it here i have a flask at the end okay, this flask is to collect the liquid coming through okay on top of that I also have a tripod maybe not on top below and we also have a Bunsen burner to supply the thermal energy but here I have a very different apparatus attached on top of the distillation flask you see this column over here um, this column is called the fracture nating column. Its role 
uh, we'll find out later on okay um, what is inside the fractionating column well this entire setup over here is made up of glass uh, so they can see through it um, here again you have a rubber stopper uh, this rubber stopper is for you to insert the thermometer and here you find a lot of round little beads they are beads okay what is inside this bead uh, sorry inside this fractionated column they are glass beads right these are glass beads the purpose of the glass beads is to help to provide a large surface area for vapor to condense on what does this mean uh, we'll find out in a while um, maybe you cannot visualize what this setup looks like so I have uh, another image over here okay uh, this is the entire setup of the fractionating um, column here you can see the fractionating column over here fractionating column inside the fractionating column you also see the beads right these are all the glass beads inside Right. We're now going to find out uh, what this fractionating column is for. Okay. Once again, this setup is not very different. What we're going to do is let's transfer the mixture of ethanol and water into the distillation flask. Okay. Let's transfer it inside. Uh, maybe just one thing to note at at this point. Uh, when two liquids are able to mix together very well with each other, we say that the two liquids are miscible. Okay, the idea of miscible is that they can mix together to form a so, uh, they can mix together to form a solution. Okay, and uh, I give you an example of two liquids that are n are immiscible immiscible means they cannot mix together right an example of two liquids that cannot mix together is oil and water oil and water is what we say as immiscible okay they cannot mix with each other but these two liquids ethanol and water can mix really well to the point you cannot separate them okay um, actually just to take note over here uh, ethanol is not actually pink in color i've just color coded it so that we can help to visualize this whole process all right, let's begin. I'm going to switch on the Bunsen burner. Same thing is going to happen. Um, the solution inside that's made out of ethanol and water is going to heat up and it's going to gain thermal energy. Okay, let's now zoom in and see what's happening. Okay, um, inside the distillation flask, the two different liquids are gaining thermal energy. All right, the two different liquids are gaining thermal energy. Let's bear in mind that they have different boiling points ethanol 78.4 water 100 degrees celsius okay let's keep that in mind okay uh, given that one liquid has a lower melting point compared to the other which one do you think will begin to boil off first we're well, right uh, it's ethanol ethanol is low boiling point so it, it can boil off much faster much more easily Okay, so ethanol is going to gain thermal energy, it's gaining thermal energy, it's, uh, as, as a result it's going to move and vibrate faster, it's going to, and eventually it's going to break off and it's going to go into a gaseous state, right, I'm going to take another ethanol molecule, right, gain thermal energy, move faster, and then to the point that it breaks off and goes into its vapor state, I'm bringing a lot of them into its vapor state now, vapor state means in its gaseous state. Okay, all of them are going to their gaseous state because it has a lower boiling point. What happens uh, as it rises, uh, we will find out in a while. Okay, but bear in mind also that actually water, although it has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius, those water molecules at the very surface can actually gain enough thermal energy to break off from the bulk of the water molecules that are still in liquid state, right? We learn in evaporation, evaporation doesn't take place at 100 degrees Celsius, right? At the end of the day, water molecules at the surface, if they have enough thermal energy, actually they can break off and go into this vapor state also, right? That's how evaporation works. So actually we have a problem now. Before we even hit 100 degrees Celsius, there are already water molecules that are also evaporating 
they have gained enough thermal energy and they are evaporating away along with ethanol right okay so what's going to happen let's go up now this is where the uh, fractionating column comes into good use right we have ethanol if have um, turning to vapor and rising it rises into the fractionating column on top of that water also get, gets boiled off those at the surface and it also goes into the fractionating column but now let's zoom in to see what's happening on a microscopic level okay at the fractionating column right we have water molecules they are the vapors passing through the glass beads these are the glass beads okay and on top of that uh, we, I forgot um, the ethanol molecules they are also passing through the glass beads okay, they are also passing through the glass beads so let me take some ethanol molecules okay, they are passing through the glass beads um, boiling off and rising Okay, um, now something this is what's the purpose of the fractionating column the glass beads at this point in time the liquid with the lower boiling point will be able to pass through all the glass beads okay ethanol is the one with the lower boiling point of 78.4 of 78.4 degrees celsius it has a lower boiling point so it will pass through all the glass beads However, the liquid that has a higher boiling point, it won't be able to make it so far. Okay, the liquid with the higher boiling point, which is water in this case, what's going to happen is this. Before it can even rise past all the glass beads to join ethanol, instead it will end up trapped at the glass bead area. And not only that, um, it will condense back into liquid state. Okay, it will condense back into liquid state. Notice all these water molecules over here, they are huddled very close to each other like a liquid state. Yeah, that's because it has a higher boiling point. So as it passes through the glass beads, it won't be able to make it through like ethanol. It's going to condense onto the glass beads and it's going to go back into its liquid state and it's going to trickle down back to the flask below. So actually all the water vapor that has ended up in a fractionating column, they will condense and you trickle back into the distillation flask because its boiling point has not been reached yet, right? Its boiling point has not been reached yet. Eventually when it hits 100 degrees Celsius, the water vapor will have enough energy to pass all the way through. But at the moment, the temperature is still too low. So what's going to happen is going to condense and go back into the distillation flask however ethanol has enough energy so it will maintain itself in its gaseous state where is ethanol going to go it's going to go into the condenser just like in simple distillation let's zoom in to see what's happening have happening in the fraction uh, in the condenser so this is what's happening at the condenser at the condenser ethanol is coming in in its gaseous state but because you recall the condenser's role is to cool down the entire vapor that's passing through so it's losing thermal energy and it's condensing the vapor is losing thermal energy and it's condensing where is it losing its thermal energy to it's losing its thermal energy to the surrounding water which is really cold Okay, that's the role of the condenser. This is water. It's being bathed by water surrounding it. Okay, so all the ethanol is losing thermal energy to the surrounding cold water and it's condensing back into liquid. Right? And where will this liquid go? Well, it's going to trickle down in this direction. It's going to trickle down in this direction and it's going to end up over here. And it's going to drip into the flask. And right now, I'm going to have a pure solution. Sorry, not pure solution. I'm going to have a pure sample of just ethanol. All right. Uh, what do we call the liquid that has ended up inside the flask? We call this liquid a distillate. Okay, we call it a distillate. All right. Ethanol is a distillate in this case. Okay. So 
we know that this whole process took place at 78.4 degrees Celsius. At 78.4 degrees Celsius, the ethanol boils off, goes into the fractionating column. Because it has enough energy, it will continue on as, a water, as its vapor form. And then it will distill over into the condenser, condense into its liquid form. And then it's going to end up into the flask as a distillate. What about water? Right? What about water? Well, let's continue heating up the mixture. Okay, we continue heating this up. Eventually, this is going to hit 100 degrees Celsius. And when it hits 100 degrees Celsius, this is when the water has enough energy to go into its gaseous state. And now it has enough energy to pass through all the glass beads. It will pass through all the glass beads. Okay, let's go on a microscopic level. It's going to have enough energy to pass through all the glass beads. Right, 100 degrees Celsius. Nothing's going to stop me now. I'm going to go into my gaseous state. I'm going to go down the fractionating column. Right, I'm going to go down the fractionating column. And it's going to be condensed down into its liquid form after it passes through the fractionating column. Right, this is at 100 degrees Celsius. By then, all of the ethanol will have already still over now it's just left with water that being said i actually need a new flask okay by by now i will have had a flask that is completely filled with ethanol okay so let me take this flask away okay let me take this flask away i need to replace it with a new flask okay uh, let me prepare a new flask okay, let me duplicate this Okay, let's prepare a new flask. Okay, so before we hit 100 degrees Celsius, I better stand by a new flask so that I can collect the next distillate. Okay, this is the second distillate, but in this case, it's just pure water. Right, so this is how a fractionating, uh, di uh, fractional distillation works. It works by making use of the fact that there are different boiling points of the liquids. How do we ensure that the, the liquid with the higher boiling point doesn't get mixed up with the liquid with the lower boiling point as it is boiling off? That, that is the role of the fractionating column. The fractionating column helps to condense the liquid that has a higher boiling point such that it falls and trickles back into the distillation flask. Only when it, the fl distillation flask has reached a temperature that is high enough for the liquid with the higher boiling point, then the liquid with the higher boiling point will have enough energy to pass through the fractionating column down the condenser into the flask at the end. Okay, so that's how fractional distillation works. If I were to draw the entire process into a graph form, this is what it will look like. Okay. If I had drawn it in, in graph form, I would have a graph of temperature degrees Celsius against time. This is what you'll see. You'll find that at the very beginning, the mixture, temperature of the mixture is rising. Okay, it's rising. And then suddenly there will be a point where it plateaus out flat. This is the point where one of the liquids is turning into gaseous state. Which is the liquid that's turning into gaseous state first? Uh, that would have to be ethanol. So it's 78.4 degrees Celsius. This is when, this is the period where ethanol boils or your textbook say distills over. Distills over means to turn into vapor and then after that condense into the condenser. After we go past 78.4 degrees Celsius, the temperature inside the mixture continue to rise. Eventually, we will hit the second flat horizontal line. This second flat horizontal line will be at 100 degrees Celsius. And this is when water, okay, this is when water boils. Okay, so if you notice, um, if we were to take the temperature at the very top of the fractionating column, this is the graph you will see. And if you notice, actually the, the temp thermometer is at the very top where I'm measuring the 
temperature of the gas that is passing through. I'm not measuring the temperature of the mixture below. I'm temp measuring the temperature of the gas above. Okay, so this is the temperature you'll register. 78.4. That's the temperature of the gas passing through of ethanol. Ethanol gaseous state. And then eventually, at 100 degrees Celsius, there's the temperature I'm measuring of the water vapor that's passing through at a later time point. Okay, so this is how fractional, uh, fractional distillation works. To summarize, it only works because there is a difference in boiling points. The boiling points are very similar, actually it's very hard to carry out fractional distillation. Um, but because there's a difference in boiling points, we, carry, we can carry this out. Another method, you've learned to separate liquids that uh, have mixed together very well. Uh, that is chromatography. But we are making use of a different uh, property. That one, because there's a difference in solubility. This one is a difference in boiling points. Right, that's all to fractional distillation. I hope this video helped you. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.